hello. Thank you so much for joining us to episode 12, How to Handle Mistakes. If you listened to our last podcast, we were talking about how to address the fear of failure. And one of the ways was that sometimes you just have to fail in order to learn. So today we're going to have a look at what you can do just to handle those mistakes when they occur. Because half the time it's the fear of making mistakes because we don't know what to do next. It's the unknown, if you like. So what we're going to do is make the unknown known. And Richard has got a great model that we're going to look at today. Welcome, Richard. Lovely to talk to you. <clears throat> uh, love to catch up again. I always enjoy these conversations. I do as well. I do. So we're talking about how to handle mistakes then. Um, and if you're anything like me, um, I learn by mistakes. Some mistakes I can learn instantly. I think it depends on what they are. But I do know that <clears throat> if I'm not... Uh, in my early days, I wasn't aware of how I learned. So consequently, I'd make the same mistake more than once. Drat. But now I know you show me I'm almost there. I'll have heard the instructions and I write them down. That's good. And then I've got to do them myself. And that's where my failure will step in. If I haven't done those, that process, then I'm more at risk of failure. But I was think I was talking last time as well is that, um, you know, it's it's. You know, it, when you get it, you've got to know what to do, haven't you? You've got to know how you're going to handle that mistake. From that moment I was talking about last time where you just feel it, it's like, well, what next? And you've got to get over the emotions before you're in a action mode to do something. What was your thoughts on how to handle mistakes? Well, I, I, I mean, first of all, you know, we're in a, a, a professional sector here as accountants as bookkeepers and so mm. mistakes are a very real problem yeah um mm. it, it's the sort of yeah if if we make mistakes we're very aware that um it, it, at the at the lightest impact you know we could be reflect it could be reflecting on our professionalism reflecting on our ability on our expertise uh, and in the worst case scenario, it could end up with as you know with, with legal claims against us or, or or what have you. So, it's as accountants, as bookkeepers, we are trained to minimise the, um, the 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 potential for a mistake, and that's why mm. we have our systems and processes, why we have our checklists, why we have our reviews. We should do everything we can to to minimise mistakes being made. But hey, they still they're still there, they're still made, um, and of course, you know, we do, we make mistakes that go beyond just the technical side of what we do. Yeah, we can make a mistake in how we deal with the situation. We can make a mistake in how we talk yeah. to somebody. Um, we can make a, mistake, a practical mistake of, you know, of, of sending the the wrong correspondence to the wrong client or, you know, getting the time wrong for a meeting. They're all mistakes. They're, you know, we, you know not mm -hmm. showing up for a meeting. But the, the mistakes happen every day. Yeah, I, hey, I'm an expert at mistakes. I, I, <laughs> I doubt there's a day gone by when I haven't made one. And so, yeah, the... I think there's a human element to it about how we um, almost address ourselves when it comes to the mistake. Because you know, some people can let mistakes really eat into them and have a much wider impact than maybe the original mistake. Um, other people maybe don't take them seriously enough and are, and are too flippant about it. So, yeah, so the, there is that that side about how we handle it ourselves as people. But then, of course, there's the practical side as well. If we had made a mistake that impacts on a on a client, for instance how do we put that right how do we address that so it's, it's a it's a it's a big topic really it is and I like the fact that you said it you know um it's how we handle it and it's about us because it all starts with us if we've made the mistake it all starts with us doesn't it and I think when I I've thought about you know my own mistakes in the past the the tendency is to just try and suddenly fix it and what I really would recommend with wisdom is to pause because sometimes you might not be fixing the right thing. <laughs> You're fixing the thing that has emotionally charged you, but the actual mistake may have been somewhere else. I mean, invariably when you're doing an account, but let me talk when I was in the bank, if a mistake occurred, it was a time staking, time uh, investment to go through everything that had been entered because we didn't know where it was. But that was the only way we would find the error. And we used to look for pence back in the day. It was ridiculous. Yeah. But you have to pause and stop and think about what you're going to do. I mean, we have processes about the way we look. 
looked for those um, differences and those errors. But if you haven't got one, that pause does two things for me. It allows you to feel what you've got going on and acknowledge it because it's okay because we all get it. Whatever that feeling is, whether it's you are cross with yourself or you're um, angry with somebody else because you didn't get the information in time and you were put under pressure, whatever the emotion is, just acknowledge it and then pause before you take action. And maybe ask yourself some um, really good questions like, where do I start? What do I think the problem is? And how do I then address this? But those that pause, I think, gives the brain time to catch up. In my in the last podcast, I talked about we cannot be emotional and cognitive at the same time. So the more we can deal with any emotion, and it might not be much, it might be just irritation, but acknowledging it allows the body to process it. OK, it processes it and then you can get on to the logical side of what you're going to do next. I, I think that, you know, talking about a pause is really good advice, you know, because we have to, whether it's our mistake or somebody else's. Uh, and, you know, let's face it, when the, when everyone's immediately aware of the mistakes we made, we don't necessarily know whose mistake it is um, yeah. or even if a mistake has been made. But, you know, something's been something's thrown up, something's coming in front of us. And I think that idea of okay let's just take a let's just acknowledge that there's something happening here and let's pause let's let's give ourselves time to think about what it what, you know what's going on here what what yeah. what uh, yeah before we even start talking about what's next you're right i think we all want to rush in and fix it straight away or hide fix it straight it, away yes. <laughs> and it's like oh let's, okay let's just because actually the, yeah let's uh, let's just get a handle on what's happening here so that uh, you know the Whenever we're talking about mistakes, I think there's two fundamental things. One is honesty and two is communication. You know, like, like most things in life, in all honesty. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm being and if I'm being perfectly honest, you know, then that honesty comes with a, a, a rider because it's not necessarily, you know, the whole truth, you know, because you've got to think about the practical implication. But if it's your mistake, put your hand up and go, it's my mistake. If it's, you know, that, if something's gone wrong, say that something's gone wrong. I think there is then a... Um, this is going to make me sound horrible, I think, but I think there's a political element to it about how you that how far you go in telling the truth, you know. Uh, yes. Um, because you've got yeah, you know, you've got to think of the wider commercial angle and the rest of it. Certainly, I'm not talking about telling a lie, but yeah, there's a there is a, an aspect about what do people need to know to put this right. Yeah. So let's say it's our you know, yes, it's our fault. We'll sort it. In many cases, that that will address it. Yeah, if we if we yeah to go to a client, yeah, we actually but we you know we've had looked at it, it's our fault. We'll put it right. We don't necessarily have to say, yeah, it's our fault because you know we were all sitting up drinking sherry till three in the morning and no one was paying attention. You, you get my point. Yeah, the sort yeah. of yeah, it's our fault. We missed that uh, particular thing, we'll put it right. That that's the level that, of honesty that comes in. But that's this this thing about let, let's first of all find out what's gone wrong. Let's 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 you know, let's buy ourselves not buy even buy ourselves some time. You know, let let's just say okay, right? Can you give me a morning to look at this? Can we take an hour to just let me get the team together just to see what's happened here? Let me look at my notes. Those yes. sort of things. Just to, yeah, the, I think generally when when people flag up that a mistake has been made, first and foremost, they want people to acknowledge that a mistake has been made. They like to hear the word sorry. Yeah, you know, even yes. I'm yeah. You know, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's happened this morning. Can you leave it with me? Let, leave it with me to to look at it. I'll get back to you at two o'clock. They they want this sense that you're not that you're taking that it's serious. If you know, if someone's raised a mistake, it it it, it bothers them. Otherwise, they wouldn't bother raising it. You know, mm. if someone comes home and they've brought me the wrong sort of cake. I'm yeah. I'm gonna go. Okay, well, it's still a cake. I'm happy with that cake. You know. So, so if if someone's raised an issue, if they flag something up, then, then it bothers them. So therefore, they want to know that it bothers you. Yeah, and I think that's the starting point always. Yeah, I think if there's nothing worse than immediately getting defensive, is there? And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and immediately almost like triggering an argument where maybe there's not an argument to be had. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Mm. I've, I have been on the other end where um, people have been um, uh, sort of, you know, we've, we've raised an issue and the client has come straight in on the attack because, you know, it's just one in a long line of mistakes. And it then 
questions your credibility. This is not something you'd have within um, the accountancy world because there are fixed processes. But when you're doing something new, more mistakes can come in. And I think, you know, still being honest and actually one of the things I would like to see is setting expectations as well, because sometimes the expectations of the person waiting for the mistake to be corrected may be higher than your expectations of being able to correct it or vice versa. Who knows? It's the other way. Good news. But if it's not and you think it's going to take longer, again, set those expectations up front. Even if it's we'll come back to you with an update. I, mean, I can't tell you how many times in, in when I was as a project manager that people would say, yeah, we'll come back to you. Tumbleweed. When? Next week? Next month? Next year? When are you going to come back? And I think keeping them updated manages their expectations, which then also builds credibility in what you're doing. So if ever you need to do it, yeah, watch mm. those expectations. I think that's important. I think that the... Um, the use of the word sorry is important. People tend to associate sorry with guilt. You know, if you say sorry, that's you accepting responsibility, so to speak. And, and we can be sorry for all sorts of reasons. But I do think it's a bit of a almost a magic word that people are listening out for when they when they raise something in the first place. You know, to say, uh, you know, that you're sorry that they've had to call this morning or you're sorry that they've had a particular problem or you're sorry that something hasn't worked out. You know, that, that's not saying this is my fault. It's just acknowledging the fact that things aren't as they would like them to be this morning. And you're sorry, you, you know, you, you want them, you're sorry, they're, you so, yeah, I'm sorry you're annoyed. I'm sorry that you're disappointed. I'm sorry that you're sad. I'm sorry that you're upset. That's not me saying this is my fault. It's me acknowledging that, that I've, I've picked up your mood. And I think sometimes that, that just that word just takes the immediate heat out of a situation. It's a good point. Yeah, sometimes when people are raising a mistake, they're yeah. almost they're coming in, they're looking for a fight, they're looking for an argument, yes, they're looking, yeah, they're there. expecting <laughs> you to 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 defend, and they're going to go at it. So I always say, look, first first thing I'm looking for is to ex is to acknowledge it, and therefore, yeah, oh, yeah I'm sorry, mm. sorry that's happened. I'm sorry you feel that way. The second thing I then would look to do is to essentially to let them fire all of their ammunition. Yeah. So let them then, they, they will have things that they want to get off their chest. So let them do that and not argue every point or disagree. Let them just almost like run out of words. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Can you, let, let, let me, uh, let me just get on top of what's happened here. So if you want to just talk me through what you're unhappy with, I'll make some notes if that's okay with you. Um, and then I'll, we'll see where we are and just let them go or whatever they want to do, get it all out of their system. Yeah. And then, because then that, that's part of us, this pause that you were saying about us buying time, but also it, it just enables us to go, okay, right. Well, uh, you know, either as they're going through it, you've either got a sinking feeling because you're thinking, yeah, I think they're right here. Yeah. We need to. <laughs> so you're starting to think of your strategy that way, or you're thinking, disagree with that, disagree with that, disagree with that, but you're not saying it at that point because no. that's just going to trigger that argument. Yeah. But, but they've then got, they've now used their case. Yeah. They've got all of their stuff out there. We've not said anything yet. We've not said we did that or we didn't do that or whatever it may be. So I think it's, I think there's a, there's a strategy that you can apply yeah, from going back to what I said earlier about the two sides, the human side and the practical side, I think there's a strategy you can apply to the practical side. The human bit has got to stay under control whilst you're doing this. Yeah. None of us like being, none of us like making a mistake. None of us like being accused of making a mistake. You know, none of us like the fact that someone's unhappy with us. And that, I guess, can trigger all sorts of defense mechanisms in us as a person. But at that point in time, we've got to sort of part those and go, let's just go through the, Almost like, let's go through the complaints procedure. Let's do the practical bit first. Then I can see where we lie. And then I can start to yeah, see, understand how to address it. But you've got to find a way of locking that human bit away first, I guess. Mm. There's a couple of things that came to my mind as you were talking there. The first was very much that um, they're just going to download and you might get stuff that happened last week, last month, last year or whatever. You'll get stuff that's not relevant, as you've already said. You know, it's not a problem. But what you will get, the more they come out with stuff, 
is the real reason that they're upset. And it won't be the mistake. It will be the impact of the mistake for them, which you may not even be aware of. You know, um, they may have been waiting on something to be able to, I don't know, for example, the um, the accounts so they can go and get a loan. And now they've got to postpone that, which has a knock on effect on a project or whatever. But you'll, you will get to the real reason that they're upset. I think the second thing is active listening when you're you're dealing with somebody who is emotional. Remember, they're not being logical. It will be just a rah is to demonstrate that you're listening and you do that in a number of different ways is nodding accept you know sort of saying i i see qualifying what they say sometimes is always very powerful so let me certainly if you've been over a little bit so let me just under, let me just understand what you've said and then you repeat back what they've said and what you're doing there is that's you're acknowledging what they've said you've heard what they've said you've got it written down and their temperature does start to come down because at least they know that they are being heard. So very mm. often um, people do not feel heard or listened to. And I think by doing that, you will make a real difference. I, I think that's a really good point. That whole, yeah, we, we, we want to be heard, don't we? We want to be taken seriously. I think that's one yeah. of the problems these days with AI and chat boxes and all the rest of it. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not, you're not going to appease me by letting me scream at a robot. That's not going to do anything here because that's you <laughs> almost, almost parking me. And I think, you know, to, to, to acknowledge their points, to show that you've listened, to show that, that, you know, we, we've recognized that, that they have concerns here. I think that's a, a huge part of the process. I do. Yeah, I think it's quite often recognised that how you handle a mistake, how you handle a complaint, can actually strengthen a relationship, you know, as long as you don't keep on doing it. But <laughs> exactly. yeah, it, it, because it shows that you care, it shows that mm. you are, you, you have a, you know, a genuine interest in, in, that, in that person. You mm. want to put it right. It says something about the relationship if you take it seriously and do something about it. Um, but yeah, don't keep on doing it no <laughs> learn from it that's later on in the in in the whole mistake making process isn't it how well you're going to learn from it and uh yeah that can come after after the fallout of okay you've got all this information now what you're going to do with it and that's where you're managing their expectations you as the person who's made the mistake or you as the organization who's made the mistake doesn't matter i think managing their expectations is really important um that you say you know let me go back like you say and then uh ha have a look but give them if it's going to be a bigger task give them milestones that you'll, you'll go back to them on and honor them because when you do that that starts to rebuild trust because that's yeah. the risk otherwise is that you're breaking or ruining the trust that you've spent time building and, and trust is the big thing here yeah this is i think this is why mistakes are such a hard thing for accountants because you know, we are, we're supposed to be the trusted advisors. We're supposed to be the experts, the professionals. We're the people mm. who they rely on to have all the answers. It's it's not, you know, that's part of the problem. Is it, you know, no one has all the answers, but that's where we place ourselves as as this professional person who who doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, they rely on us not to make mistakes. Mm. So it, it does mean that, Yes, there's the practical implications of, of a mistake being made, but also there's those personal ones that you know, are reflecting on our professional ability, are reflecting on, you know, does this person doesn't trust me like they used to trust me? And, and you know, there, there's there's quite an emotional side to making a mistake, isn't there, really? And yes. and also, you know, bear in mind we've talked in the past about you know, imposter syndrome and, and lack of confidence and all the rest of it. And, of course, if you then recognise that you've made a mistake, that, just drive, that can drive you further down that yeah. path. Mm. um you know it, it do we can we can we just ex, accept a mistake i don't mean in terms of the the practical side of it if we've made a mistake it needs put in right but as a, mm. as a from a from a human side do we need to learn how to accept making mistakes yes learn from them but mm. we, we are going to make mistakes we make yeah we do make mistakes every day yeah, that's what I, people I think. Do. It depends. We're not, we're not, and and I think um, it, it's it's a tolerance thing. I think your tolerance for making a mistake. If it's if it's small stuff and it only happens occasionally, then yeah, you. I think you probably could. If it's small stuff and it's happening regularly, that's 
that's a worrying trend, I think, for you as an individual to understand what's going on. It could be that you're under time pressure. It could be that you're out of your comfort zone in terms of your learning. But you can do something about it, can't you? So if you find you're making lots of little mistakes, it's still um, on the emotional scale quite manageable because all you need to do is understand what's happening here. I think when it gets to the medium ones, the tolerance le level starts to become a little less, doesn't it? You know, I don't know um, where that would be on the accountancy scale, uh, what would be considered that. But that's where you start to have more buy in. And they are fewer at this point. Um, but when they happen, they're more noticeable, shall we say. Um, missing deadlines, for example, or um, I can't think of any others at the moment, but you know, let's go with those. Again, let's understand what's going on, because a mistake is just um, what is a mistake? We have not actually qualified that, have we? A mistake is something that was not right or was done incorrectly. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, See, that's a, it is a very good point, because it, it, sometimes what someone would perceive as a mistake, others wouldn't. Yes. Yeah, the, it, it, I think there's something about expectations linked in there as well. The, there's clearly, again, the, there's the technical mistake. That's pretty much black and white. Yeah, you've right. got, it, it's like getting uh, adding two and two and getting five. That's a mistake, you're wrong. It, there's no argument on that, not that I can think of. Um, but then you've got how people, um, people have different expectations and people interpret things differently. So what may, what, one person may see as a mistake another person may not necessarily see as a mistake do you know it's interesting i've just gone inside oh okay perfectionism <laughs> oh, yeah. so some one person's perfect isn't another person's and that's where mistakes um are, you know you 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 hear of people uh, and i worked with somebody whose attention to detail was out of this world and you know every spelling mistake every grammar mistake and in the big scheme of things for me you can still read it it's still english i may have got the odd spelling i'm not i'm usually pretty good with spelling but you know there may have been a typo creep in or whatever and she no back that's not that's not right you've got to sort that out so for her it was a mistake for me it yeah okay but it wasn't a big thing for me um and so the perfectionist in her had everybody on tenterhooks trying desperately hard not to make mistakes. And what happens when you're trying not to? Oh, you make them, don't you? It's almost like an unconscious thing and you're just doing it and you, it's not your intention. So the perfectionist is uh, an, a good example of somebody who holds themselves to a high standard or, or high tolerance or intolerance of mistakes. And they can set the bar for people around them, which can be very uncomfortable, I think. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've been married to one of those 22 years so, <laughs> and, uh, and, and as a business partner <clears throat> as well. And, and it, you know, it, it, it's, it's a perfect example because I, my, you know, I tend to, um, my view is when you make a mistake, it's done. You know, you can't turn the clock back. The mistake is made. So, yes. hey, whether you want it, you, know, you just got to deal with it and you move forward and you deal with it and you address it. Um, yeah, Rowena is, you know, by her own admission, a perfectionist and expects those same standards in others, despite the fact that I've consistently failed to do that for 20 odd years. <laughs> um, and, and from a business point of view, that's always worked really well for us because, you know, to actually combine those two, there's a practical, the, the, you know, that's why our systems and processes were always so tight because that was her side of the business. And it's all about minimising the impact of those and, and getting things done perfectly. You know, I am not a perfect, a perfect person. You know, my, my role. Yeah. And so we, you know, we recognize the different skill sets and have always applied those differently when it comes to how we partner up in, in business and in life, I guess. So I think you do just come back to one saying what sort of person you are. She still expects things of me that I'm not after like 22 years. I'm like, you know, I'm never, that's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, but it, <laughs> there's still that expectation there. Yeah. And I, I think that um, in my view on it is that you, know, you can't you can't undo a mistake you can make it better afterwards you can correct it but you can't undo it because it's happened mm. and therefore you just got to go that's where the i think the answer comes in to recognize that that you know there's, we, we've you know we've identified something here now we need to deal with it or not as the case may be some mistakes Absolutely. like hey it's happened but let's just move on because we can't change it now mm. yeah we, we've missed the train what are you going to do 
let's the practicality is let's try and find another one i know we'd sooner not miss the train yeah but i can't be doing those sort of conversations about mm. you know well, yeah but whose fault is it you just said at the start that i got this model if you like to talk to her and, and it's it's a yes yeah um that that people who have heard or won't have heard and it, it's it's quite common in our world now because i talk about it a lot and, that, and that's all bed o-a-r-b-e-d and it links to this you hear people talking about above the line thinking and below the line thinking that's what all bed is um i don't know who, who to give it credit to i don't know where it started from um i i, I think it came out of the southern hemisphere out of new zealand but, but i may be wrong that may be a mistake um <laughs> but so it's oar ownership accountability responsibility then picture a line drawn underneath it so you, you're doing it vertical oar bed oar ownership accountability responsibility then the line and below that blame excuses and denial and quite often i'll hear people say that essentially below the line thinking is wrong above the line thinking is good you should always be above the line not below the line i actually don't agree with that because blame excuses denial are genuine things you know when something's go has gone wrong it may well be somebody else's fault you may well be able to blame somebody else you may have a perfectly reasonable excuse for for how you've acted to it it may be nothing to do with you whatsoever. They are all very, very practical situations. So I think to say to someone, you can't do that. You can't blame somebody else. You can't make an excuse. You can't be you know, in denial. I, I think is wrong because that may be the, the, the situation. What I always argue is that whether that's right or whether that's wrong, the reality is whilst you are still in that mode, you're not going to fix anything. Yeah. No. Right. So regardless of who's to blame, regardless of whether you've got an excuse or not, regardless of whether you can deny it, what are you going to do about it? And that's when, you know, in other words, how quickly do you swap your mindset to stepping above the line, take responsibility, be held account, you know, take some accountability for it. Mm -hmm. It's that take ownership of the problem. That That's what I think when it comes to handling mistakes, we can spend all day long in in the uh, the autopsy of the mistake below the line but it you know and to and we need to to some extent because that's part of this taking a pause and finding out what's happened but we're not going to fix it by staying in that position we're going to fix it by going above the line and going okay what are we going to do about it you know let's park now blame and excuse and all the rest of it what are we going to do about it and i think that for me is always the key thing you know to because we can, the rest is just an argument, or or it, the rest is a very negative field. The rest, yeah, we, we're beating ourselves up. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah. I wish we hadn't missed the train, but we have. So we can stand here on the platform and argue whose fault it was that we were late for the train, or we can actually grab the timetable and try and find another one. Yeah, mm. what are we going to do? Yeah, it, it's that sort of thing. I think it is that that's how you move forward from a mistake, and and if a mistake's been made. You have to find a way of moving forward from it. Yeah, you know, if it's a mistake in life, you have to find a way of moving forward. Otherwise, you're just essentially calling quits on a relationship or something. Yeah, and I think that. So, okay, yeah, it's that, that that's happened. What are we mm. going to do about it? I like the way you talked about the uh, the fact that there's no right or wrong uh, with the all bed. Um, that's right, isn't it? All bed uh, model. And that actually being below the line is OK. And it, and for me, just for a moment, it sort of uh, is very much like I was talking about. There will be emotion around any mistake. It's, it might be brief and fleeting and that's OK. You move on. It wasn't that big a deal. You <laughs> or, you know, um, it's not important as as sometimes it's not. Um, it's only if it's a collection of them does it become important. I think that almost feels like the emotional content, the blame, the excuse, the denial. That's where we start, <laughs> even for ourselves, perhaps. Oh, is that mine? That's a sort of form of blame, albeit it's backhanded. You know, the excuse. Well, what was what's been going on? And then the denial. That's in the wrong order for me. The denial would be the first thing, but it doesn't make such a nice, <laughs> a nice um, uh, whatever you called it, acronym. So. But then once you've acknowledged that, 
and the pause. OK, that's the case. And the pause might be that this is part of your review of what's gone on, what happened, who was involved, you know, whatever. Then you do move to the top part. So I'm just acknowledging it from a emotional internal perspective. You know, that can go on and there's been nobody else involved. You're just doing that sometimes in a fraction of a second. You don't even it's not a thinking process. It's an emotional one. So. I think mm. that's that's really yeah really like that and I, I you know um you're right if if there has been a mistake usually we identify our own mistakes quite quickly and for most of them we can get those sorted apologize as you say um one of the things we used to say in project management if you've got a problem come with a solution don't expect somebody else to fix it for you so have a think about what needs to be done to correct it for a whole raft of reasons that's a good idea first of all you've given it some thought you've considered it maybe that's your way of taking responsibility i found these aren't answers but it also means nobody else has to pick up the flat the you know the, the slack on that one and can actually okay yeah even if you go with two or three and then they can choose which one they want i think that can sometimes be quite powerful on its own go with the solution um, at least that way, you've got this um, uh, opportunity to move forward from a mistake. Yeah, I think it's a good point. If, if you can get sort of both parties, if you like, involved in that solution, then I think you've got more chance of it being a, a, a very positive outcome. Mm. You know, everyone buying <clears throat> into it. But yeah, let's face it that, you know, a lot of mistakes, there are, there's percentages of blame on either side sometimes, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. But, you know, particularly with the sort of work accountants do, that yeah, the, the accountant may have made a technical problem, but it may stem from the fact that they've not been given all the information from a client in the first place, for instance. Yeah. So if, if, you know, if it, this comes back to that honesty and that communication and, and pulling themselves together, the, the reality is, you know, as accountants, if we make a mistake, we, or, you know, or if a mistake is made full stop, you know, we really need to put it right as quickly as possible. Because yeah, we work in a, a in a job where there's no scope for mistakes. You know, mistakes cost interest and penalties and you know um, legal claims and things like that. There's a, there's a, you know, there's a practical risk to a mistake. So therefore, as a profession, we tend to be quite good at fixing a mistake. But the, the the human side is still the weakness bit, I think, because yeah, we might fix it, but have we have we built have we rebuilt the relationship for instance or are we allowing our ego or our pride or our temper to get in the way we might still have fixed it but we still lose the client yeah so we fixed it from a risk point of view but we've still lost the client because the client's not happy with how <clears throat> excuse me how we fixed it how we've sort of tried to sidestep the blame how they found yeah they found out that we were waffling about the yeah we we were we weren't telling them the the true picture, if you like, when it comes to the thing. I think it's the human side that um, we're weakest on because yeah. we almost have no option on the other bit, fix it or get sued. You know, that's, you know, that's fairly fairly straightforward. Yeah. 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 But, but the human bit, mm. yeah, where you can, where you can, on the one hand, help yourself to get over it yeah. and on the other hand, help the relationship to build, I think mm. that's where we're weaker. Yeah, and I think you said <coughs> it earlier, it's honesty and communication. I think if you can approach your mistakes with clients or some, you know, um, some other people within the business or whoever in life, if you can approach it with honesty and communication, then I think you're well on the way to managing the relationship external. But the relationship with yourself is the one that you've got to think about, too, and understand it was not intentional. I can't think. I was just suddenly thinking, is it ever likely to be intentional? No, <clears throat> it was not intentional. Mm. There was something going on. And for whatever reason, um, you, you've you made a mistake. It's a learning opportunity. That's all. And as long as you learn what you did or what was going on to cause the mistake, then you can make sure it doesn't happen again. And if that's the case, what I would say is, would you continue to blame a five-year-old the way you blame yourself? Mm, good point. I think that's a nice way to end this this week's recording. So, Richard, 
I think there's another one of those where there, there's so much more we could cover, but you know we've only got half an hour. So, um, any last points you'd like to raise on on um, the idea of handling a mistake? Uh, well, all bad is the one I will always push. That's the one we always talk about. So, if yeah. anyone needs more details on that, then by always you know, drop me a line. But yes, yeah, you know, the, the honesty and the and the communication comes is part of it. But at the end of the day, hey, it's it's got to be fixed it has well listeners thank you so much i hope that's been um insightful for you and um when we're going to do the next one coming up we'll be addressing confidence issues so maybe we'll tap it into mistakes as well all right thank you so much lovely to talk to you richard thank you you too bye bye